board because, all right, Jamie, a lot of our team um, checks out the recording. So we don't necessarily have a lot of coaches on live, but we do have a lot of coaches that check the playback. So guys, this is Jamie Messina. Jamie and I have been friends for two years, maybe a little bit more. I'm not even, I'm not even sure at this point, but we've been coaching for a while together now. And Jamie has a successful business. Um, she is out of Boston. And one thing that has been awesome to watch with Jamie is just watching her change in the way she runs her business because she started to coach more confidently as her business started to grow. So she is somebody that I trust to talk about confidence um, because she's been there, because she knows that it is a muscle. You know, it's like a muscle. You have to keep working at it. You know, you don't just become a confident person overnight and that's it. And everything kind of falls into place. It's something you consistently work on through the power of personal development, which I'll let her talk about. But before we get into that, I'm going to do a quick screen share because I wanted to just talk to you guys for a couple minutes about some stuff we have going on. But before I do that, I want to also mention that success club, right? So it is the 19th of the month. I don't even understand how it is going so fast. Um, we just got done with Super Saturday. I feel like I can finally catch my breath a little bit, but I put this image together real quick um, of who so far on the team is achieving success club. And I know we have it in us that we can push harder than this because these numbers are a representation of the number of lives that we touch, right? Uh, it was funny because at the training this weekend, Jeff Hill was in and he goes, guys, if there was one thing that I could go back in time and change, it would be that we called it success club because there's, there's this, this thing about the number and that the number means success, but really what it's about is helping people, right? So it's just about helping people. And two points basically means that you're helping one people through the products. Um, when you achieve success club five, it basically means that you are committed to helping at least three people a month understand the programs and the products and you're helping them change their life. So success club really is truly about just helping people through the products and the programs that we have available, telling them about the benefits of Shakeology and helping them through the programs. We all know that programs like Insanity, they don't always come easily to people. You know, they aren't always easy to do. When I did Insanity, it took me six months to get through that program. I didn't know anything about coaching. I didn't know anything about challenge groups. I just kind of did it on my own without understanding the nutrition. So really, when we talk about these numbers, it's you as a coach saying, I'm committed to helping at least three people a month. And remember, too, that really when you're helping people achieve their goals, you're also being rewarded for the work that you do. I know as a team, we sometimes have a little bit of a hard time understanding that, you know, it's okay to get paid to help people. And it is. It truly is. And really, if you look at the breakdown of the holiday cash plan, it's so easy to understand. You can make close to $1,000 simply by helping three people a month um, who are continually loving the products, loving them, and ordering them month after month. Throughout the holiday season, you could earn potentially $830 by helping three people minimum each month with um, the use of our products and programs. So what does it mean to help them? It means that you are making sure that you are motivating them. You're inspiring them. You're putting them into a challenge group. If you yourself are not running a challenge group, you're reaching out to your direct upline and you're saying, hey, you know, I really want to make sure that I'm getting this person started right. When's the next challenge group started? I want to make sure that I have them in a challenge group so that they're receiving that, that um, daily tips and motivation and recipes and meal plans and all that kind of good stuff. So really, guys, it's true. Um, you are earning about $150 for um, helping at least three people get committed with the 21 Day Fix Challenge Pack. Uh, the next month, if they continue to order and you help an additional three people, you're again going to earn $310. And then by December, if you again help three people, you are going to earn $830 for holiday cash. So instead of saying, I wish that I had money for the holidays, or I wish I didn't have to charge it, this is your solution. And why wouldn't you want to help people um, get healthy and fit for the holidays as well? 
You know, we have hammer and chisel coming out. So what's a great place to start? It's your own transformation. You know, it's your own 21-day um, fixed journey. Everything right now is, is great for marketing. If you start saying to yourself, 21 day fix, I'm gonna do the 21 day fix, and then I'm gonna go into the 21 day fix extreme, or I'm gonna try body piece, and then I'm gonna go right into hammer and chisel, because what's gonna happen is, you have people who are watching you starting now. They wanna see you know, what you're doing. They wanna see if you're the real deal. They wanna see a transformation from you. And if you're starting now, by the time that hammer and chisel comes out, and you get those results, they're gonna be like, I want this person to be my coach. Guys, you are going to get no's throughout October, November, and December. You are, it just happens. It truly just happens. But I am gonna tell you, if you start laying this foundation now, and you start saying to yourself, no matter what, I am achieving Success Club, you are going to see how easy of a transition you have going into the month of January. The work starts now. You know, you really have to lay that foundation. You really have to be consistent with your follow-ups, your invites daily, no matter what. You're posting, you're talking about healthy habits, you're running free crock pot groups, you're really starting to build up your contact list so people know you're the first person they're gonna go to when they have a new pro when we have a new product coming out or they're really ready in January to get started. So Carl Deichler created, and I'm going to see if I can click on the link. Carl Deichler created this. It's just the help three image. I don't know if you guys saw it yet, but it's just about planting seeds and the link. I can just add it to our team page. I don't know what's going on with my thing in the jigger. Um, I can, I can add it to the team page but it's just marking names down on a calendar for you so that you can really make sure, okay, am I staying on track with the three people? This is inviting, this is planting seeds because if you're planting seeds with people now, you're gonna prosper. You're going to see the fruits of your labor start to pay off when we get into the other months. So even if it doesn't turn into a sale right now, that's okay. You have the contact and you have the relationship started with that person. So let's really get focused on that. You know, make October your month where you're like, I am not going down like that. I am going to be successful. I am going to hit success club no matter what. And when you think like that, when you start to say those things to yourself, you truly start to believe them. So um, a couple things. I don't know why it keeps switching like that. Shh, hold on one second. I'm going to stop the share for a second because I need to. Hold on. Sorry. Get used to this. Okay. All right, so lastly, I just wanna make sure that I'm sharing some dates with you guys so that you can mark them in your calendar now. Um, I am going to do a coaching sneak peek next week. That starts October 26th. You can invite to that. I am just starting to talk about it. It's just a very general group. I would highly suggest that you create an event for it. Um, and then in the event, make sure that it's set to public. We have a habit of, and I don't know if you saw the Super Saturday video, but it's true. Facebook actually defaults it to private. If it is private, people won't see it. So you want to make sure that you set it to public. Um, a coaching sneak peek, it's going to take place the week of the 26th. I'm also going to be hosting a business opportunity on the 28th at 9 p.m. Pittsburgh coaches and those of you willing to travel. Kim Carver, uh, who is from the sales team in corporate, um, is coming on November 14th to do a training with coaches on the three vital behaviors. There is also going to be a diamond breakfast that morning. So if you're working towards diamond, you have to be officially a diamond rank coach on November 14th to achieve that or to be able to attend that, but the three vitals is open to anyone. I'll be posting the link in the Knockout Brigade later tonight so that you guys can check that out. Uh, those of you striving for qualification for two-star or five-star bonuses, November 25th is the way to go. And if you are somebody who's thinking ahead, January 9th is going to be the Super Saturday event across the country. 
specifically in Pittsburgh. We're going to be hosting it likely on January 8th, which is a Friday night. And we have all kinds of events sort of throughout the rest of the weekend. So um, it's definitely worth it for you to make the trip to Pittsburgh if you're interested in attending that Super Saturday. All right. So enough from me. Um, Jamie, if you want to go ahead and click unmute, we will go ahead and get started. Oh, I never muted it, girl. Huh. Um, <laughs> just quiet. What's up, guys? How are you? Good? Yeah. All right. So I'm very informal. I just want you to know, like, um, I actually thought I was doing this next week. So <laughs> Katie, Katie dropped the ball on that one. But um, so for you that don't know me, my name is Jamie Messina. And um, I somehow became like the confidence guru with the dream team. Melanie did that, but it's crazy. Um, because when I first started in this business or actually my entire life until like last year, I had the least amount of confidence ever. Um, so like just a little background, um, my whole life I was like that quiet girl that stood in the back of the room and um, my best friend had to do weird things for me like pay for my clothing or if I had to make a doctor's appointment, even in college, um, she would call for me. I wouldn't do things like that because I wasn't just shy. I was like beyond. I just always felt like people were always, you know, thinking the worst of me or um, all these things. Basically, if you're going to say, you know, that person has the least amount of confidence ever, I would be the face in the dictionary. It was, it was me. Um, and, you know, year after year, I would continue to be like, oh, I'm going to get in shape because I was on this flag football team and they would never play me. I got to hold the chains. And, and that just did nothing for my confidence either. And I was like, I want to play. What do you mean? I can do this. But like, they were all like D1 athletes and everything. And I wanted to prove myself. So um, I, I decided I was going to get in shape after saying for 10 years that I was going to. And then I stumbled upon Melanie and found her. And um, the rest is kind of history. But I'd like to say that, you know, I, I lost some weight with my physical transformation. But my real transformation was, you know, the inside. And it was, it was absolutely huge. And um, so I decided after talking to Katie about what you guys are kind of, um, you know, needing right now, I, I decided that I was just going to share a story with you about how I uh, found out what my why was. And the reason why I chose this story is because I think it, it touches upon a lot of different things that people are probably struggling with right now. I know that these months are really hard. Um, people want to check out, you know, nobody's really interested in fitness right now. They're like, oh, I just want to get through the holidays and now and then I'll come back in January, right? And so sometimes as coaches, we start to check out too because our lives are busy as well. And, um, you know, it's, it's easier to check out. But, you know, I know being in this business now for three years that now is not the time to check out because people may not be coming to you as much, but they're watching you. And then come January, you know, if you're checked out now, they're, um, they're going to go to the person that was posting. But there's a reason beyond that why you should be active right now and posting in into it. And, and uh, I think my story that I'm going to share is going to um, kind of tell you why. So, I, um, so one of the things I grew up my entire life was with anxiety and, de and depression. And I'll tell you right now that the, the holidays still to this day, they are the hardest time for people. You know, if you, anyone who's ever lost somebody close to them or, you know, it's just the holidays just brings that out. If you're going through something, you know, like it, the holidays just brings it out. You see all these nice fuzzy movies on TV and everybody's perfect and, you know, everybody's getting gifts and everyone's talking to you, you know, and you're just either missing that person or just feeling more depressed during those times. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why you guys have to be on point right now and just share and go through struggles and, and reach out to people because there are a lot of people that are feeling that way during the holidays and um, I think it's important for them to find you guys, but it will all tie in when I tie my story. So um, let's see, where do I start? Um, so I guess I will start with, when I first came into this business, I didn't have any success club points, I'd say for the first year and a half. Um, I had, because I was kind of, iffy about posting and inviting. I had a lack of confidence in that area. And um, I just kind of like throwing darts because I also didn't know what my why was, right? And I would see Melanie and, and all these people and, and please don't get offended, Katie, but everyone just seems like um, 
this like cookie cutter image. It was, you know, they were all in sorority. They were all blonde. They had 2.5 kids. They had a white picket fence. And um, I just felt like, and I was, I never even met any of them. I'm from Boston. And I just felt like before even meeting them just through the internet, I felt like I stuck out like a sore thumb. I had the most anxiety about even coming on calls like this. This was before we had video chat. It was Insta presenter, presenter or something like that. And your name was just in the column and I wouldn't even go on because I didn't want my name to be there. Um, it was that bad for me. I just, I just really did, felt disconnected. But I heard about this success club trip um, and I was obsessed with Sean T. I thought he was the best thing in the entire world. And um, I really wanted to go on the trip. So I figured out how to sell challenge packs and get success club points so that I could get on this trip and get it for free and, and all that. Um, but at the same time, I was still trying to throw in darts uh, with my post because I had no idea what my why was, you know, I'm like, I don't have kids that I want to come home and stay home at home with. I don't, you know, nobody in my family is sick or I just, I didn't know what it was. And I'm like, I don't have a story. I just don't have one. Um, but so I'm, I figured out at least how to sell a challenge pack and I'm getting these points and going on this cruise or whatever. So I, I made it to the cruise and um, I decided I was going to go. And, and I honestly, I don't, I didn't have a, a significant other or anything like that. I had no one to go with me. No, my good friends, none of them could come. I brought some random person in my, in my downline. And First of all, for an anxiety-ridden person, that is the worst fear ever. So you're bringing somebody you don't know on a ship in the middle of the ocean that you can't run away from um, with a group of people that you know you're going to stick out like a sore thumb around. Uh, so I was like freaking out before I even got there. I, I remember the week before I was freaking out, just feeling like um, so worried. I remember talking to my brother, just like, I just feel like I'm not going to fit in. And he's like, who cares? Like, what's your problem? But I, I was getting that like, I had gained a little bit of confidence, but it was creeping back up. This trip was really giving me anxiety. And um, I still just, I just had no idea what my why was. I didn't know, we, I was in a, I think I was in some kind of push group at that time. I was trying to figure out what my why was. And um, I just couldn't figure it out. But so I'm ready for the trip. I'm going. Um, and then three days before the trip, um, I found out that a friend of mine had, had committed suicide. And this was a girl that I, I worked with at Margaritas and we were all friends, you know, everybody that worked there, she was the bartender, life of the party, everyone, you know, she just seemed so happy and hung out with us all the time. And I would never in a million years have thought that she would have done something like that. I didn't just never would have thought that. Um, so I didn't get to go to the funeral or anything because I was going on the trip and that was really kind of weighing on me. It was actually the third person I had known that had committed suicide in the past year at that, that, that time a young person who was close to my age that had a lot in common with me. And um, so I ended up going on the trip. You don't have internet there. I, I obviously, I wasn't good friends with anybody. I wasn't from Pittsburgh and, and I really didn't fit in. So it was just me and this, and this random girl from my downline who I'll be honest with you guys, I really didn't even like that much once I got to met, meet her. So it was like, Ooh, so me on a ship and then person, my personal development book. And so I decided, you know, I'm just going to look up, I'm going to talk to as many people as I can and, and read my personal development book. And um, so that's what I did. And I spent a lot of time just trying to figure out, you know, just thinking a lot about my friend who, who had hung herself and reading the book and, and also enjoying, though, the, the energy of the people that were around me. Because it was, it was like this infectious energy that even though I was there, felt like completely by myself, it was awesome. Um, but one of the days... I was in my little cabin. There's no windows in. I had this indoor small little cabin thing. And I don't even know why I was in there, but I was in there for a minute. And I, I had the TV on and there's this, um, they had this beach body all the time channel. And it wasn't like infomercials. It was, you know, um, interviews with coaches, top coaches and stuff like that. And Brigitte Linford came on and I started listening. I really don't even know why I was in my room. I feel like it was supposed to be because, um, there were legit no windows and it was weird and it was, I was sick and I didn't want to be in the room. But, uh, so she got on there. I don't know if you guys know anything about her, but she was telling her story, which I had never heard before. Actually, I don't even think I knew who she was at the time. And she talked about how she had dealt um, with severe depression and, um, that through this business, you know, she was in the hospital actually for, I think she attempted suicide or just for depression or something like that. But something at that moment when I was listening to her, the you know the light bulb moments they talk about that was like ding and I was like who you know because uh, I had dealt with a lot of that and and then here's my friend who just committed suicide 
And um, if you think about it, so when I went to Summit this past year, I went to Katie's presentation. It's actually the only presentation that I got to go to. And the one thing that sticks out in my head that I hear all the time is that, you know, you're, you all have a story and your story is that one thing that you're embarrassed to talk about that you don't want anybody to know about you. That's your story. Well, that's what it was for me that I have dealt my entire life with anxiety and depression and that, you know, I had several times more than several had, you know, contemplated, you know, wanting to kill myself, but I would never do that because of what it would do to my family. But I was in such a low place that yes, that was like on my mind all the time. And of course I didn't want to share that with anybody, especially on social media. Are you crazy? Like people are going to think I'm nuts. Right. But at that moment, listen, listening to Brigitte Linford, I was like, Oh man, because what if I had been more real with that part of my life? What if I had been crafting posts around that? Um, you know, this girl, this friend of mine who had just hung herself had always commented when she saw me about, Hey, how's the beach body thing going? Or when I posted, would always like or comment on them. And I just got to thinking, you know, what if I had been more real about that part? And what if I had made more posts around that or any posts around that, how I struggled with that and how, um, health and fitness and joining this team has helped me to become more confident and to like myself. And that although I had been on um, depression medication for 10 years, nothing ever helped until I had that paired with this opportunity and, and health and fitness and stuff like that. And I just started thinking about, you know, not that maybe I could have saved her cause you can't think like that, but what if that night I had posted something um, along those lines and she had read it and that stopped her from doing that. So I decided right there on the ship that when I got back, I was no longer going to be afraid to post. I'm not going to be afraid of what anyone's going to think or, you know, who's going to see it or what they're going to think about me because it's life and death, especially in that situation, more so than people just being overweight because that's life and death too. But for me, it was something different. It was wanting to die or wanting to live. You know, I always say that um, I may have been alive for 28 years before I found Beachbody, but I, I wasn't living until I actually, you know, took and made that change in my life. So the minute I got back from the trip, I wrote this blog post and I had written a million blog posts before about, you know, health and fitness and drink your water. And here's a recipe for this and that. And maybe 17 people at most would read, would listen to that, or, you know, I could see how many views. And then, so when I got back, I wrote this, this blog post and it was how health and fitness how focusing on health and fitness changed my life. And I got really deep and I basically told the story that I just told you. And, um, I got 500 views in that, in that one, in the first day of that. And so many people reaching out to me and thanking me for sharing it. And I was like, yep. From then on, I was just, yeah, I have to, I have to share that part. And so anyways, from there, I just really started focusing on personal development and, and, the more I focused on personal development and sharing that, the less scared I became and the more I realized that I'm actually helping other people. Um, but the reason I wanted to tell you guys that story was because it's so important to post, <laughs> you know, all and to be real and to share your story because in this case, you know, we always talk about changing people's lives, right? Well, we all do this because we want to change somebody's life. I can promise you, I don't want to know where I would be had, Melanie Mitro not sent a massive email to all of her sorority sisters about joining this challenge group thing. And her old sorority sister roommate happened to get it and send it to me because when I joined this, um, I was in the most horrible spot in my entire life. I did not want to live and I did not know how to change that feeling. Um, I had no idea where to go. I didn't know what to do. So what I drank a lot, I took a lot of pills um, I was always high. <laughs> That's how I did it, dealt with it because I didn't, I didn't like myself. And the only time I thought that other people liked me was when I was trash because that was what I was good at. And until I found this, my life didn't change. And I can almost guarantee that I would be in jail or have gone to a car accident or something crazy because if I hadn't made a change, because I was in a deep, dark place at that time. So um, and I lost my train of thought, but basically I just wanted to tell you guys that story because now I feel great and <laughs> I'm the happiest and healthiest I've ever been. And I honestly never felt like I could get to this point because I kind of grew, I was always, I think depression runs in my blood and my genes. And I always felt like that's just how I was going to be forever. You know, the low confidence, low self, that's just how I was. I didn't know that there was a possibility of changing. 
um, until I found Beachbody. And not even until I found Beachbody, but it wasn't really starting to change until I focused on personal development and made it a priority in my life. And that paired with working out and constantly stepping outside of my comfort zone and all those things have, it's when people see me, they're shocked. Like you guys don't, or any of you don't know me, the old me, but the people who do are, they don't even think it's the same person because it's not, it's, it's crazy, but it's not. And, um, I just wanted to share that with you guys because I, I know a lot of people have, especially right now, you know, feel like you don't want to post, feel like you don't want to this. Who am I really helping? You are helping somebody because the old Jamie Messina needs you to do that. The old Jamie Messina who's looking for something to spark them or to give them the direction, who's just wandering around trying to know, like, how can I change my life? How can I not want to friggin' kill myself? <laughs> need you to say, hey, I used to be depressed or felt anxiety, and then I got this challenge group. And now I feel great, you know, obviously not like that, but they need to read that. They need to see that because I don't know. I mean, wouldn't you guys be sad if I wasn't around? <laughs> hey, Jamie, let me ask you something. So, I mean, as somebody who struggled with depression and anxiety, I mean, those old things, they, I mean, they come back occasionally, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So how do you, and aside from personal development, how do you like basically remind yourself that you need to do it like when it gets hard and you are reading personal development what are what is your go-to to make sure that you do it no matter what well so yeah it definitely comes back and it, I'll be honest with you guys mine has come back just in this past couple months because I've had an issue in my in my in my life that kind of triggered it but I'll tell you one thing it is not the way it used to be it, it used to be that I would just dig myself in a hole and be like oh you know just feel bad for myself where now I'm like all right I'm gonna get through this but I need to do my personal development every day. I have to do these things, even though I'm not myself, I, I, I got to keep doing these things because I'm going to get there. So when I am feeling that way, like I am actually right now in the past couple months, um, I make myself do my personal development, even though I don't want to, um, especially podcasts. Like when I'm cooking or anything, I'm always listening to the podcast because there's always something like whether I'm really listening or not that kind of clicks, but also in the minute I wake up, and before I go to bed, I make myself <laughs> gratitude. Um, the top 10 things in my life that I'm grateful for. And uh, that's helpful when I'm feeling like, you know, down about things. And I think that everything's so bad. I'm thinking about, like, recently I've been saying, I'm happy to have my legs. Because, you know, there's a bunch of people in Boston who don't have their legs right now. Because they were blown up at the marathon bombing where I was. And I could have been there. Um, I was walking to that point when, when the bombs went off. So I remind myself that a lot. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just happy to have my legs because they don't. and Or I'm happy to, you know, just things like that. I try to re remind myself that, yeah, there's hard times. But there's other times that are worse. And I have this now to help me get through it. Like you know, I talk to the tailor all the time. She hears my, you know, like she, I just have people here that I talk to, I reach out to. And just even when I don't want to do the personal development, I do it. Also positive movies, happy movies. You have to surround yourself with that stuff. I dove into the ultimate reset cleanse to try to focus on something other than what I was going through and just like, you know, indulge yourself in things like that. <laughs> cool. What other questions do you guys have for Jamie? I know I was kind of was scattering my brain, but <laughs> I'm just trying to find everyone. Oh wait, now I lost everyone. Uh, do you guys have questions for Jamie? I hope I didn't depress you guys. That was supposed to be a happy story because since I came out and, and did that with the whole, well, and since then I started with the, you know, here, I'm going to be honest about being depression is, you know, depressed and stuff. And I've been, since then I have been honest about so much more. And then every time I open up a little more and I'm honest about something else, I feel that much better. And more people come to me and more people, yeah. come to me. You know, I was afraid to share my personal life. I was afraid people were going to judge me and whatever. And then one day you just don't care and you share it and you realize nobody cares and you're, you know, you keep going with it. 
Yeah. And it's so important too. It's just like the idea of just breadcrumbs. And right now, as we get into that fourth quarter, it's what you're doing with Beachbody and through Beachbody and how it is empowering you. So much like the book that we reference a lot, it's jab, 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 right hook. So you're giving these snippets of your life. You're talking a little bit about the various things that you care about. And then your right hook is something related to Beachbody or an invite of some sort. So for example, right now I'm doing the 21 day fix. So I'm finding little ways to integrate the 21 day fix containers or the 21 day fix into the things that I'm doing. So like today in the comments section of a post, I might have, I, we were talking about moose meat. Uh, my, my brother-in-law went hunting and got like a 1400 pound moose in Canada. And we were talking about it being a red container, you know, being able to eat the moose meat and it's still a red container. Um, we said something, I said something this morning in my post about, um, I think it was just, what are you grateful for? It said something, something like that. And I talked about being down one and a half pound or 1.1 pounds after a week of this 21 day fix. So you start finding these little nuggets of information to integrate into what you're doing with Beachbody, but you want to make sure you're still connecting it, you know, so people understand that you're not just somebody who's throwing out positivity everywhere, but it is related to your journey as a Beachbody coach, as a coach who's on your own transformation journey, you know, who's, who's still a work in progress or whatever it might be. So that's kind of my information. That's kind of like my little suggestion. And my call to action to you is to go back into your post that you've looked at, the post that, you know, you've done in the last week or so and say, is it inspirational, but does it also connect to the mission of the company? Does it also connect to the things that I enjoy, the things that, the transformations that I've been a part of? Am I talking about it? You know, am I giving people what they need? Like, am I talking to that person I was before beach body. So even if it wasn't, you know, depression and anxiety, what could it possibly be? You know, what, who are you referring to? Who are you talking to? So when you initially got into beach body, what was it about those posts or those things or those, I don't know, whatever it was that attracted you in the first place. That's almost like you have to work overtime right now to make those posts sort of come to fruition, to make it sort of appear like, you know, this is what is important to me and this is why it matters to me. So that's kind of my tip for the last quarter. Jamie, did you have anything to add in that regard? Oh yeah. Like I think not being scared to share struggles and be real because you know, I, when I was getting zero success club points, I was just like throwing positivity out of here left and right, you know, but like Katie said, I'm breadcrumbing with the ultimate reset cleanse, but I'm also being real and I'm, I'm kind of sharing just a little tidbits that maybe I'm going through something and that's why I did this and how the release phase is about releasing toxins, but also you can release um, negative emotions or, or negative habits that you've had and, and stuff like that and kind of tying it into, Hey, I might not always be happy, but I'm doing things to kind of, you know, through beach body to make this better. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fearless Friday. Oh yeah. Do you want to talk about that for a minute? Your fearless Friday that you do? Yeah. Um, so I decided that 2015 was going to be my year of like pushing myself out of my comfort zone. Right. And the first thing that I did was I told Melanie, I was going to, I wanted to do a call for her. And so in January I did, but before we even got there, um, we went to that thing last year in January, the, the super Saturday. And, you know, I was like, Melanie, I want to, my big thing was I was going to rap on stage at summit, um, for the talent show this year. And she was like, Oh, you should practice. So I got up in the bar and I rapped at this, whatever we were at. Um, and so then I decided I was going to start pushing myself and be fearless more often from that. So every Friday, you know, you should push yourself outside of your comfort zone every single day, which I do. And that's how I've grown in confidence. But just to make yourself do it. I, and I can't even do fearless Friday anymore because I don't really have anything that I'm afraid of anymore until like skydiving comes in. But on Fridays is my plan day where I push myself outside of my comfort zone, like the really big ones. And I call it fearless Friday. And I always um, tell teams that I do calls for, if you could do it on Friday and tag me in it, you can blame it on me. So if there's something you've been holding off on making a video or posting something on Facebook, do it on Friday, leave it on fearless Friday and say that I made you do it and you can break the ice that way. And then every Friday, um, do something that makes you step outside of your comfort zone and not just the little 
step outside your comfort zone, but like the big things, like one of mine is to go into um, Starbucks and sing my order <laughs> next time <laughs> to the guy, like things like that, you know? Um, yeah. That is really cute. I like the idea too of um, having people do it on, like on your page for you. If you have nothing that you're afraid of, you'll have to let us know when you sing in Starbucks though. Oh, you'll know, trust me. But also it, it kind of takes the fear off the people who might be doing it for the first time because they can blame it on me. Say, I have to do this Fearless Friday this is a big fear of mine because Jamie challenged me or, you know what I mean? Kind of takes a little pressure off of you. And then every time after that, you can just keep doing your own. <laughs> and then Rachel Harvey asks, um, do you feel like you did a bit of fake it till you make it until you actually felt confident? Do you suggest this tactic to others? <sighs> um, I didn't because I don't, confidence wasn't my thing before before until I was, um, you know, um, I don't think I ever faked being confident. It wasn't until somebody told me that I was and that I started talking about it because I didn't realize it was Melanie actually who kind of pointed it out to me. So I never really faked being confident. I was just being real in the sense that I really loved Beachbody and everyone could see that it changed me, but I never was like, Oh, I'm so confident here. No, mm -mm, until I actually felt that way and recognized that I was. Mm. And I do, ah. I attract the old, so here's a little issue that I've been having and not an issue, but I, I attract a lot of the old Jamie's, which um, it took me about two years to actually come out of my shell and to coach. And, you know, I think it took me almost two years to become a diamond, a year and a half maybe. And um, I'm attracting the old me's. And so it takes a lot of work. You know, we talk a lot about personal development in my team because they have a lot of work to do on themselves before they're feeling comfortable about posting themselves. And, and stuff like that. I'm hoping to start attracting some new Jamies though. And I do think too, like this is just something, it does come with time. It is something that over time, like as you become a different type of leader and as you grow in your develop, you know, in your personal development and the way that you approach it, you do start to attract a different type of person. But yeah, it's very normal, I would say, you know, to attract um, a certain type of coach at different points in your business. For example, the coaches I signed before I was diagnosed are very different than the coaches that I signed while I was diagnosed and while I was fighting cancer. Yep, for sure. Cool. Well, do you guys have any other questions for Jamie? Awesome. All right. So our um, call to action for the evening is we are going to do a Fearless Friday post. We're going to be tagging Jamie on Friday in that post. But before we get to that, I really want you guys to look at your own timelines and I want you to start asking yourself, you know, am I really talking about beach body in a way that I'm showing it confidently? Am I, am I being a product of the product right now in my post? You know, I don't know if you guys listen to the national wake up call, but she really gave a wake up call today and said, guys, you know, you can't just be a beach body coach and not be using the products, you know? So go back and say, okay, you know, what am I integrating? You know, am I doing the 21 day fix? Am I drinking my Shakeology? Am I sharing that? Because it's almost like something that's so sick, second nature to us. We don't, we often like let's sit on the sidelines instead of it being like front and center, because that really is what our social media platform is as beach body coaches. For sure. So go ahead and look back at your timelines and, and say, you know, am I really talking about the products? Am I showing how I use the products? Am I talking about the way they have an impacted me on a personal level, on a physical level, or on a financial level? Like, are you doing those type of things? Because that's what we want to be integrating in. Jamie, thank you so much for your time tonight. Guys, um, make sure you give Jamie a tag um, on her timeline tonight to let her know that she did such an awesome job. And I will catch up with you guys all later this week. Have a great night. Bye. Bye.